time is it? What? It can't be. The fleet sails in an hour. Yeah, I know. It's 26 miles. Goodbye. I'll be right down. Say, how do I get to San Pedro from here? Bus, right? Oh, say, that was my bankroll I gave you there. How about a bar and a half I can pay on the bus, huh? I'm sorry, but you said the fleet left in an hour. Yeah, that's why I get to get to San Pedro. I'll send you the half a dollar. Uh, no, thanks. I'll keep it. Uh, then you won't be bothered. But I'm in a jam. Oh, I'll never go to another Navy wedding as long as I live. This is where I turn off, sailor. Well, thanks for the lift. We're not doing so good. We better figure something out. We'll never get a mom and pop this way. Oh, no. It's kind of tough getting a ride on this road. Yeah. What time is it, Captain? 10.34 and I'm not a captain. Admiral. Chief Gunner's mate. I know it's Chief something. Uh, what is a Chief Gunner's mate? You mean, what was a Chief Gunner's mate? If I don't get to the harbor in just 26 minutes, the ship will sail without me. Gee, a fellow like you in uniform and all ought to have any trouble thumbing a ride. Navy men in uniform aren't allowed to thumb rides. Look, son, I got a hunch one of us stands a better chance of being picked up. Now, be a good boy and go sit down someplace, will you? Okay, only... Only what? Only, I got an idea that I think would work. If we was to walk along together, kind of like you was my pop, you know, helping me on account I was sick, like this. Hey, come on, get that... It worked. She stopped. She's backing up. Oh, thanks a lot. This boy's in no condition to hitchhike. Oh, he's all right. He's just tired. You don't know what a lifesaver you are. You see, I've got... I know. Fleet sails at 11 o'clock. Leaves you exactly 18 minutes. How come you know so much about the Navy? The Pacific Squadron hasn't sailed in or out of a coast port in the last three years that I haven't been on hand to watch. Well, what do you know? A sailor's wife, huh? Sailor's wife? Listen, mister, I wouldn't marry a sailor if you're the last man on Earth. Oh, is that so? Just what's wrong with the Navy? Sailors? Don't want to talk that way about the Navy, Pop. Now, quiet, son. You have to be respectful of ladies. Motorboat Colorado. Motorboat Arizona. Well, I just made it. Thanks a lot. So long. So long, Pop! Water 
Motorboat Florida. Where? Motorboat Florida. Motorboat Tennessee. Motorboat Arizona. Motor Launch Arizona. Motor Launch Arizona. Does he always leave you like this? Sure. We understand each other. Motorboat Tennessee. I'll be back in a few minutes. Motorboat Colorado. Motorboat Louisiana. Who is it? Who? The good looking girl. Oh, her. That's my mother. Oh. You're a lucky boy. Motorboat Louisiana. Motorboat New Mexico. Motorboat New Mexico. Motorboat California. Hey, this is a light, my pal. I don't think you want to drive to San Francisco. The fleet's only going to be there about a week. Now listen, we're going to have Christmas together. Besides, I'm putting off saying goodbye as long as possible. I'm getting sick of it. If it wasn't for the goodbyes, there wouldn't be much kick in the hellos. Hello and goodbye. That's the Navy. You sound just like your mother, Stevie. Why shouldn't I, Dad? Look, you and Mother were married 18 years. And how much time do you actually spend together? Three or four. Or you were halfway across the world when she died. I wouldn't marry a Navy man if he were an admiral. How about Brad Wheeler? Is that still on? Certainly. That's another reason I want to go to San Francisco. He's there. At least, Dad, if I married Brad Wheeler, I'd be able to say goodbye in the morning to a man who was coming home the same night. That's right. Of course, your family's always been Navy. I'm glad to see you revolt. There's the order show warning. Get going. Listen, Dad, as soon as you're dark, go straight to the Fremont and I'll be there waiting for you. Well, I won't have much time to spend in San Francisco. Well, a little's better than that. We're going to have a Christmas tree if it's only a few days. You win. Right. See you in San Francisco. Special news flash. Be on the lookout for a 12-year-old boy who ran away from the Golden State Orphanage. He is about four feet nine in height, has curly brown hair, hazel eyes, wore a maroon sweater and blue overalls when last seen. That's bad. Boy. No, I haven't. I guess he got tired of waiting. Will you see if you can fix it? I'll be having a cup of coffee.
Here's your knock, lady. He was in the rumble seat. What in the world? I thought you had gone home. Well, I was looking in there and the lid closed on me. You know him? Yes, I know him. Will you have a sandwich? Sure, thanks. What kind? Hamburger with onions. Could I have a soda pop? Anything you like. Soda pop. I kept knocking, but the lid was stuck. Well, I'm glad we found you when we did. Afraid I'd gone too far. Now eat your sandwich, then I'll take you home. Yes, ma'am. Oh, -hoo. you must have been hungry. How long since you had anything to eat? Not very long ago. I guess I just like hamburgers. <laughs> Would you like some ice cream? Yes, ma'am. Did you have any breakfast this morning? Uh, breakfast? Well, I, I was kind of busy. Doing what? Uh, I'm looking for Pop. Oh, I see. Where do you live? I mean, where does your father leave you when he goes away? Oh, anywhere. You mean you have no regular home? No, ma'am. Well, doesn't your father make some arrangements for you when he goes away? No, ma'am. Where's your mother? I don't know. You mean your mother and father are separated? I, I guess so. Does he leave you often like this? Yes, ma'am. When do you expect to see him again? I don't know. That settles it. You're going with me. Where? To San Francisco. I will take you to your father. Oh. Go for the final dog. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Anybody home? Where are you, Stevie? Coming. Here. Oh, Jack. Any luck? Plenty. I located him alone on the Florida. I got to a couple of his shipmates, and they're going to drop in socially with him. All right? Perfect. <laughs> you old sweetie, always there to pitch. The Florida, you say. Isn't that Captain Parker's ship? Right. And the skipper himself's going to drop in. Good. Say, what's our gunner's reputation? Excellent. That's the funny part of it. He's going up for a warrant in the spring. Oh, he is, is he? We'll see about that. You know, Dad, the more I see of that swell little kid, the matter I get. To get him clean? Clean. You wouldn't recognize it. <laughs> he was at the door, Dad. Hello, Ma. How do you do, sir? Let me take your hat and coat. Thank you. Captain Parker. Steve, my, you're getting to be a big girl. So I am. Let's see, the last time I saw you was... Uh... Bremerton, eight years ago. Oh, yes. Cigarette? No, thanks. Nice of you to come, sir. Not at all. Matter of plain justice. Disgrace to the Navy. I thought maybe we could settle it off the record. Uh, where is the boy? I'll get him. Tommy! Tommy, ready? Yes, ma'am. Keep your fingers crossed, pal. Tommy Malone. How do you do, sir? So this is Tommy. Yes, sir. This is Pal. Oh, hello, Pal. This is Captain Parker, Tommy. Captain? Yes, son. What's the matter? My father has a uniform with stripes and all. Captain Parker has a uniform, too, Tommy, with gold braid. Do you know my pop? I thought I knew him pretty well. Captain Parker commands your father's ship, Tommy. Oh. He's pop's boss. Yes, son. Well, what do you know? Here he is. Take the boy in the other room. Come here, baby.
Come in, boys. Hi, Chief. Hi, Burns. Hello, Chief. Hi, Nelson. Uh, Malone, this is Pat Moore off the Tennessee. How are you, Chief? The boy said you wanted to see me. Yes, I got a little surprise for you. Surprise? You fellas have been holding out on me. Well, this is a surprise. My little lifesaver. She kept me from swimming after the fleet last Saturday. Yeah, she told me about it. I'm her father. Her father? Well, no wonder you knew so much about the Navy. Well, 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 this is one on me. A CPO's daughter. And you're the one that hates the Navy. <laughs> well, I suppose you know these two smiling faces, Burns and Nelson off of Florida. Yes, I know. <laughs> hmm. Well, uh, uh, what do we do now? Roll out the barrel? <laughs> no. Uh, no. No! This is not a social gathering, Malone. I'm sorry, sir, I didn't see you. Moore arranged this meeting to give you a chance to explain your behavior. I don't understand, sir. Neither do I. A father who would desert his son is something no one can understand or tolerate. That's a fine boy, Malone. A boy most fathers would be proud of. Just a minute, sir. There must be some mistake. What boy? Your son. Yes. What? The boy you left hungry and homeless on the dock of San Pedro. Oh, that kid. I never saw him before in all my life until just before you picked us up off the road. That was a gag to get a lift. I was in the spot, sir, and I had to get to the Navy landing. Well, you told me he was your son and he called you Pop. Perhaps we better have the boy in, Steve. Oh, is he here? Bring him right in. That'll settle everything. Come on. Oh, he's a nice kid. But as far as me being... Oh, Pop! Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The kid is crazy. Look, kid, what is all this Pop business anyway? I'm not your Pop and you know it. Now you tell these people the truth. Well, if you don't want me... Tommy, is he your father? Go ahead, Tommy. Is he or isn't he? Well, he's the only father I ever had. That's enough. Malone, it's as plain as day you're only trying to avoid your responsibilities. The Navy cannot and will not countenance criminal desertion. It's a frame-up, Malone, sir. child desertion in this country is a serious offense. And twice as bad in the Navy. If you haven't made the proper arrangements for the support of your son within 48 hours, I'll have you brought before a summary court. But, sir... That's all. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Malone. A fine mess you got me in. Listen. Oh, and you haven't been any help Don't either. Don't shout at me. Don't shout at me. Wait a minute, Malone. Wait a minute. Don't blame your troubles under my daughter. You better obey your skipper's orders. Look, you fellas aren't going to stand by and see a thing like this done to me, are you? We don't care much for anyone that will desert a kid. Oh! So you're all against me, huh? All right. All right. All right. Put me in front of a summary court martial. See if you can pin that kid on me. Go ahead. Don't worry, son. If your father won't take care of you, the Navy will. Sure, we'll make you the son of the Navy. Boy, we're in a jam. Ain't Pop great when he's mad? Come on, come on, shower down, boys. This is on the level. Uh, just figure you're gonna smoke half as many cigarettes from now on. Sure, they'll only start your growth anyhow. <laughs> Thanks, come on, Joe. Yes. Chuck? How are you, George? Hey, pipe down. What's the matter? Did I interrupt something? Nothing much. We, uh, we're just taking up a little collection. Yeah? That's right. We're taking up a collection to support your kid. I suppose you told everybody aboard ship about it. Look, Mike, we're none of us angels. But we wouldn't run out on a kid and leave him to starve. He's not my kid. I told you I never saw him before last Saturday. If he was my kid, don't you think I'd tell you about it? Wouldn't his picture be in that locker? Wouldn't I be proud of him like any father? Are you all crazy? Joe, Fred, Pete, you believe me, don't you? Oh. So that's the way it is, huh? Yeah, that's the way it is. Now, you beat it ashore and take care of that kid. Or we'll make it so tough for you, the captain won't have to prefer charges against you to get you out of this Navy. I ought to take your two dumb heads and bump them together. And you and all the women and children in this country aren't going to run me out of this man's Navy. No, but we can make you wish you were out. Bed. Tommy, as soon as you finish your cake, you can get ready. Do you have to go out? Sure. It's the man I'm going to marry. 
Oh. Hello? Oh, thanks. He's on his way up. Is he in the Navy? I should say not. He's a businessman. Come in. Fred. <laughs> Hello, Hello, Steve. <laughs> Gee, you look swell. I would have been up here sooner, only I, I had a chance to put over a big deal. Who's this? A young man I brought up from San Pedro. Tell me, this is Brad Wheeler. How do you do, sir? Hello. Who is he? His father's chief gunner's mate on the Florida. Oh, a sailor. Chief petty officer. <laughs> That's right. I'll tell you all about it when we have dinner. All right. Tommy, don't stay up too late. Good night. How long is that kid going to be here? Oh, I don't know. White. What's the matter? That's the boy's father. So what? Comfortable bed, plenty of food. <laughs> You're doing all right, aren't you? Yeah. Pop. Pop. Look, there's no Captain Parker around here to make me shut up, and I'm going to get to the bottom of this. What's the idea of making everybody think I'm your father? Well, come on, say something. I'm going to get the truth of this if I have to slap it out of you. And then I'm going to take you down and make you tell the skipper. You must think I'm an awful chump. Look, kid. You're old enough to know that I'm in a jam, and you're the only one that can help me out, aren't you? I guess so. Then what is this, a racket or something? Did somebody put you up to this to get paid off? No. Then you know I'm not your father, don't you? Yes. Well, now we're getting someplace. All we have to do is go down and tell the skipper. I can't. Can't what? I can't tell anybody. Why not? Because they're looking for me, and I don't want to go back. Back where? Back where I come from. If you was in a place with a big fence around it, people coming to get kids all the time, and nobody wanted you. What are you talking about? A big fence around it, people are coming to get kids. You know, where they adopt them. Oh, look, son, will you tell me once and for all, man to man, where did you come from? The orphanage. How long did you live there? Ever since I can remember. I made up my mind I wanted a mom and pop. And if no mom and pop came for me, I was going to get a mom and pop for myself. So I ran away. And then I met you. I thought you'd make a swell pop. And Steve came along. And she drove me crazy. Ooh, you didn't pick her out for a mom, did you? Well, she's been awful good to me. Get your sweater, get your sweater. Where are we going? Don't ask any questions. Are we all even up for If money? you say, Mom, I'll pop you. Yes, Pop. Pop, Mom, Mom, Pop, you're driving me crazy. Come on, get out of here. <laughs> I can't toss you out at this time of night, can I? Here. Get into these. And go wash your hands and face. I, I already been washed. Who washed you? Steve? Go wash again. Fine mess you got me into. Three days ago, everything was perfect. I had a job, I had a future. I was happy. I liked everybody, everybody liked me, and then you came along. Now I'm an outcast. My messmates won't speak to me. Captain saw my job is practically gone, and I got a woman hanging around my neck. And why? Because you wanted a father. Oh, if I ever get my hand... <laughs> come on, come on. Wait a minute. 
Didn't they teach you any better than that in the orphanage? Oh, yeah, I, I forgot. And please make him like it. Amen. Look, son. Now, I can see your side of this thing. But you picked on the wrong fella. I'm Navy. If it wasn't that I'm on leave, I'd, I'd be on board ship right now. I'm never in one place long enough to have a home or a kid or to give the kid the thing he deserves. Well, this is swell right here. This is no place for a boy like you. Besides, next Tuesday, the Navy starts for battle practice in the Caribbean. And I'll be gone six weeks. That's all right. I'll wait. Oh, no, Tommy. It, it just wouldn't work out. Now, I'll tell you what. You stay here tonight and start back in the morning. I'll put you on the bus, and I'll even write a letter to the orphanage saying you were visiting me so you won't get in trouble. And then, well, I'll keep in touch with you. And I'll send you postcards from all the ports. When I get to San Pedro, I'll come and see you and take you out to the ball game and the circus. We could have a lot of fun together, see, kid? Gee, Pop, then I won't be with you on Christmas. Now, wait a minute. Don't start that tear stuff again, and I'll, I'll buy you a new suit or something. I woke you up, Pop. Oh, uh, good morning, Miss Baker. Thought I heard voices. Oh, that was me. I was lost in talking to myself. Oh. Uh, I wouldn't go. Who slept over there? Well, it uh, got a little lumpy over there, and I slept over here. It was more comfortable. <laughs> What's the matter, Pop? Huh? I didn't know you had a son. Neither did I. I mean, nobody did. Tommy, this is Mrs. Baker, the landlady. How long is the boy going to stay here? I'm going to send him back today. Well, all right. But remember, it's a dollar extra charge for last night. And keep that dog off the furniture. Gee, I'm sorry about that extra dollar, Pop. So am I. Well, I'll go out and earn it. Oh, no, you don't. You stay right here in this room. I don't want to get in any more trouble before you get on the bus. I'm going out and get us some breakfast. There's plenty around here. Make the bed. Straighten up a little bit. Here. Keep that dog off the furniture. If he wants to take a nap, put him in there. Gee, pal, we've got to do a little figuring, or else we'll both be orphans again. Why don't you answer the phone? It didn't ring. What? Hello? Oh. I guess I'm hearing things. Well, I guess you are. Oh. Why don't you relax? 
Relax? How can I relax when I don't know what's happened to the little boy? Probably hasn't had anything to eat. Now, honey, you spoiled the whole evening last night worrying about that kid. Now, forget about it. I don't know what his father's done with him, though. Brad, didn't you see a peculiar expression on his father's face? I thought his whole face looked peculiar. Yes. African bird in three letters. Brad, you sit there working crossword puzzles when that little boy's out there lost. But I don't think he is lost. Now, let's analyze the situation. Oh. How long have you known him? About three days I've known him. Well, but how old is he? Eleven. All right, for 11 years, he's been getting along fine. Brad, that's just it. For 11 years, he hasn't been getting along fine. Oh, if I could get my hands on that father of his. You... Dad, what'd you hear? Anything? Not a thing. He hasn't been back on board. Oh, that proves it. That proves it. Well, why don't you do something? Why don't you call the police? Why did you... Hello? Tell me. Are you all right? Where are you? Well, listen, darling, now you wait right there. I know where that is. Now you wait right there. That was Tommy's with his father. Just as I thought. We're going. Come on, let's go. Let's go where? We've got to see him, of course. But don't you want him with his father? I don't know. I know that you're too fond of minding other people's business. Listen, it's my business to take care of that little boy and see that nothing happens to him. Steve, it's time somebody told you a few plain facts. Dad, are you going to stand there and let him talk to me like this? This is your fight. Well, goodbye, I'm both of you. Steve! More. Look, I... No. An African bird in three letters. Come on, Tommy. Let's wash the face. What again? Well, cleanliness is the first rule of success. You want to be a successful businessman, don't you? Oh. What are you doing here? I'm only trying to see that this child is properly taken care of. Who's that? The name's Brad Wheeler. What do you want? I brought him. Oh. Let's get some things straight around here. You weren't satisfied till I took the kid. All right. Now will you leave me alone? You only gum things up. I'll handle the situation from here, Ian. Oh, in. not if this is an example of your handling. Leaving this child in a hole in the wall while you're running out in the streets. I just went out to get him some breakfast. You mean he hasn't eaten yet? I suppose this is your idea of breakfast. A jelly donut. I, I like jelly donuts. Yes, I can understand. You're sticking up for your father. Brad, run down to the market and get some fruit and cereal. Just a minute. If I want to give the kid jelly donuts, he'll have jelly donuts. You'll not feed I'll him I'll feed jelly him when donuts. I feel it's like feeding him. If I I wait a minute, Steve. I agree with the boy's father. There, you see, oh. he agrees. What? Who asked you to do me any favors? Look, before you came here, the kid and I had everything figured out. Now, you and your boyfriend come in and change everything. All right, you take it, it's yours. And bad luck to you. Feed him cereal, feed him anything you want. Make a... All of them. Oh. Why, for two cents, I... Take it easy. Steve. I don't like the way you're handling this. I resent the whole thing. You'll resent. Yes, and I won't have you staying in this man's apartment. You, you won't, eh? Now you start giving me orders. Well, I, I didn't mean it that way, Steve, but... But nothing. Or the idea. We're not married, you know, and if you start dictating to me, we never will be. Oh, but Steve, I'm not... I'm not trying to dictate to you. I'm only trying to tell you what's right. I don't need any help from you. Um... Fruit and, and cereal, huh? Tommy, yes, I don't wash my face. There you are, one to Los Angeles. You sure it's all right for a kid to ride alone on the bus? Certainly. We handle hundreds of children. Motor launch, California. Captain Parker, sir. Yes, Malone? I have something that... Uh, yes, I've... I know. I heard about you and the boy. Good work. I knew you'd do the right thing. Yes, but there's something you ought to know. Motor launch, Florida. Motor launch, Florida. Forget it, Malone. We all make mistakes. Just carry on in Navy fashion. Yes, sir, but... Uh... That's all. See you aboard. The only thing to do is I can see it. Is it all right with the rest of you? Sure. sure yeah. Then here's what we've got to do. I want you to all... Hiya, Mike. Hey, what's the matter, sore? I don't want to talk to you fellas. No, but we want to talk to you. 
Hey, uh, we heard what you did about the kid, and we want to tell you that what we said yesterday don't go. Yeah, and we don't blame you for being sore, Mike. No, we uh, were kind of rough, Mike, and we want to make it up to you. There's one thing you fellas want to get clear. That kid is Look, not... Look, Mike, we don't care about why you left him or when or where. That's ancient history. You're back together again, and that's good enough for us. Yeah, tell him about the doll. Yeah, you uh, remember we took up a collection for Tommy? You can give it back. He doesn't need it. Oh, look, Mike. <laughs> for the last time, will you get this straight? Yeah, it's okay, Mike. We ain't gonna force the dough on you. No, we're uh, we're gonna give a party for Tommy. Sure, Christmas being so close and all. Uh, look, there can't be any objection to that, can there? I'll show him a kid a good time. Maybe he hasn't had so many good times. Hey, Mike? Maybe not. Well, then it's all set. All right, but after Christmas... Ah, don't worry about after Christmas. Everything's gonna be all right. Oh, boy, that's good enough, <laughs> right, boy. <laughs> You like plenty of gravy? Uh-huh. <laughs> there we are. I'm alone. Hello, Mrs. Baker. That young lady in your apartment. Oh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> and then there'll be three of you. No, there'll be two of us. Oh, the boy don't belong to you. No, the lady don't belong to me. This is swell. You cooking and all. <laughs> Just like a real home. Wouldn't it be nice if things were always like this? Us being together. You, me, and Pal, and... Don't you worry, Tommy. You'll have a real home. When I get through with that father of yours. Gee, I hope you don't hate me like that when I grow up and join the Navy. You what? Tommy, you'll get that out of your head if I have anything to do with it. But you're but... not going to have anything to do with it. Now, you've made a fine mess of everything around here. Now, go away and leave us alone, will you? Do you have to shout so? Yes, I have to shout. I have to do anything to show you that you're not wanted around here. Nobody asked you to bring the kid to San Francisco, but you did. Nobody asked you to come here this morning, but you did. Nobody asked you to stay, but... But I did. Because you stormed out of this room. That's you, though. You'd not only walk out on a little boy, you'd walk out on any obligation. I tried to find excuses for you. I told myself you're a big, gruff outdoor man. But you're not gruff. You're just loud. Have you finished? Yes, definitely. <gasps> Take your hands off me! Listen, lady, will you please go away and let me run my home the way I want to? Stop your yelling! What's the matter? Are you having trouble with the... Uh, no, nothing at all. No trouble at all. Good night, Tommy! Good night and goodbye! <laughs> the nerve of her! Trying to run my affairs! And, and look, look at this kitchen, look at the mess it's in! And I suppose I have to clean it up. Hmm. Ow! Look at the size of that. What, she thinks she's running a restaurant? What is that junk? Meatloaf. It's awful good. Steve made it. I'll eat beans. I suppose she broke this too. This will open in the jiffy. What's that? That's my Robinson Crusoe knife. Robinson Crusoe? Yeah, I won at the orphanage in a spelling bee. It's got a can opener, corkscrew, bottle opener, and a leather punch. That's quite a knife, isn't it? Sure is. I think more of that than anything in the world. Except in you, Pop. <clears throat> Go on and eat. Well, you coming or not? I'm nervous about that, Malone. Ordering me out of his apartment. Well, you asked for it. You wanted the child with his father, didn't you? But are you satisfied? No. You're still a little Miss Flixit. Why don't you leave the man alone? Only because he took the child under pressure. He'd leave him again at the first opportunity. Any father who treats a child like that bears a lot of watching. Steve, you're not fooling anybody but yourself. You may have started out with a boy in mind, but you're winding up with a father. Why, that pig-headed sailor? Brad, I wouldn't have I know, I know. I've heard that one before, too. Now, if we're going to get married, I've got to ask you to stop this nonsense and start realizing your responsibilities as Mrs. Bradley Wheeler. I don't need you to tell me about my responsibilities. Nobody's ever stopped me before from doing what I think is right. And you're not going to be the first one. Wedding or no wedding. Now, if you'll take your foot off my running board. Steve, wait a minute. I, I didn't... Uh, roast potatoes. Yeah. Carrots. Uh-huh. And apple pie. Where? In the oven. No, 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 you, you, oh, no, you can't do that. Uh, there's too many <laughs> starving women and children in the world. Oh, we've got to, we've got to take this thing uh, 
Well, philosophically. You know, you can't just waste food like that. No, not if you put it like that. Well, that's the way it is. You just gotta face facts. Give me a plate. Yeah. Look, if you ever tell her you and I am quits, I'll just have a snack. Good? Yeah. But it can't compare with the food they give you aboard ship. Do they have good food in the Navy? What do you mean, do they have good food in the Navy? I always thought you had salt pork and hard biscuits. Ah, maybe in the old sailing ships. But this modern Navy is big business. They not only feed you well, but they teach you confidence and discipline. If a fella doesn't want to make a career out of the Navy, he can do a hitch or two, and then come out with a trade that'll make him independent for life. If I had a kid, I'd... Eat. Pop? What? Do you think I could join the Navy? Sure, when you're older. It'd be good for you, too. You know, I bet if Steve could hear you talk, she'd like the Navy. Who cares what she thinks about anything? I was only thinking. Now don't do it. You thought once before and got me in a fine mess, didn't you? She is a good cook, though, isn't she? Yeah, but a dizzy one. Wouldn't surprise me a bit if it was poisoned. Good morning, Dad. Come on, Nellie. How'd you sleep? Fine. Good. Oh, you made coffee. I wanted to make it for you this morning. Oh, you women don't know how to make coffee anyhow. What do you call this? Battleship paint? <gasps> Too strong for you, huh? Not very. <laughs> well, by the way, Brad called up this morning. I say Brad called up this morning. I heard you. What's the matter? Don't tell me you had a fight. Remember, he's the man that comes home every night. Dad, stop picking on me. I'm not picking on you. What's the matter with you lately? You're on edge, jumpy. And what's the idea of hanging around Malone's apartment all the time? The boys tell me you're driving him crazy. I'm driving him crazy. All I'm trying to do is see that that boy is taken care of. I walked in his apartment yesterday morning, and what do you think he is feeding that child for breakfast? Donuts and coffee. How'd you know? Well, all sailors buy donuts and coffee ashore. Besides, kids like them. Sure they like them. They like strawberry shortcake and cream puffs, too. But you don't feed them that for breakfast. Oh, I don't know. Besides, I think it's a father's own business what he feeds his kid. Now, look here. You want him alone to take care of the boy. That's why you brought Tommy to San Francisco. Now, why don't you leave him alone? Or are you falling for him? Beth, don't you ever say that again, or I'm going to break everything into place. Falling for Malone. Well, I wouldn't have that big, round, long I know, long I know, I know. But uniforms have got people in trouble before this. Dad! Wait! <laughs> what does shore patrol mean? Are you in trouble? No. Shore patrol is the naval police that help out the local authorities when sailors get in trouble on shore. Oh, that's the fellas with SB on their arm, huh? That's them. Kind of tough getting a break like that on Christmas Eve. Why? In the Navy, when it's your turn, it's your turn. This boasted Howard I'm relieving. Well, he had to go to the hospital. I was next up, so I'm it. Get off the furniture. Go on. Then you're not sore? Sore? I mean about me adopting you and everything. Well, I'll talk to you about that. Let's call all bets off for a couple of days until after Christmas, then we'll decide what we're going to do, okay? Okay. Well, I got to be shoving along. Now, you stay close to the apartment and don't get in any trouble. See you later. So long. So long. What's your swell dog? <laughs> uh, 
And it's Aldi, eh? Yeah, just like the kid. How old is he? How old is yours? Well, my kid's 10. Comes about to here on me. Mine comes to there. That's 11. <laughs> I sure hope it fits. Why don't you ask his mom? Oh, he hasn't got any mom. I mean, uh, 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 she's not here. She's out of town. Oh, I see. What else do you give a kid that age for Christmas? I gave my kid a sled. Oh, that's great. Only my kid's in California. You're lucky. Mine's in Brooklyn. Tommy. Reading Christmas stories? No, ma'am. I'm studying the Blue Jackets manual. Blue Jackets man? Oh, you're going to be a sailor, too. Yes, ma'am. I suppose that's your father's idea. No, ma'am. It's, it's my idea. Tommy, it isn't good to study too much. You ought to be out playing with the other children. I, I don't want to. You mean your father keeps you shut up like this? Yes, no. Where do you live when your pop's out to sea? Uh, with Mom. You mean that young lady who was here yesterday? Is she Malone's wife? No, Pop isn't married. Uh, you mean they're divorced? Well, most of the time. Well, go in and break it up. Send the girls home and tell the sailors to report back to the ship. Oh, hello, Nelson. Hi, you, Mike. Hey, you coming off watch in time for the party? Sure, just waiting to hear from you. Well, here's the plan. We'll gather at Steve Moore's apartment with the tree and... What? Steve Moore's apartment? What's she got to do with this? Well, we uh, told her father and she took charge. She would. Who? Of all the interference. I know, Mike, but where would we have it? Aboard ship? At my apartment, of course. He's my kid, ain't he? Well, yes, but... But what? Well, you know, Steve, she makes up her mind, it stays made up. There's no use arguing. Yeah? Maybe it's no use for you guys. But if she thinks she's going to step in and run the kid and me, she's crazy. Look. I made up my mind that nothing was going to interfere with that kid having a good Christmas, but I'm going to give it to him in my own way. I know, I know, Mike. She's driving us all crazy, but we're doing it for the kid. Now, will you have him there when you come off watch this afternoon? Look, Mike, you don't have to speak to Steve if you don't want to. You can sit on the doorstep. But have him there, will you? Don't disappoint the boys. All right. Tell the boys, Taylor, stick with them. He's all in. Hey, our wise guy, what are you going to do now? Don't worry, I come from a long line of engineers. You're terrific, you should have stuck to it. <laughs> You're having your party later. Oh, well, we want to have fun. Now, this is Tommy's party. Just relax. Death. I'm surprised at you. Go on, put these tags on the packages. Shame on you. Nelson, is he coming? Yeah, he'll be here. Well, he better. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Hiya, Chief. Oh, what happened to Howard? Well, he's in the sick bay, appendicitis. Makes it kind of tough on you, eh? <laughs> Not half as tough as it is on him. What can I do for you? Well, I'm from headquarters. We got a complaint and there's a sailor mixed up in it. So I thought I'd check with you. 
Well, thanks. I'll send a man along with you. What's it all about? Well, someone called in and said a sailor was keeping a kid locked in a room. Up at the Mission Apartments. Probably nothing to it, but you know how it is. Uh, yeah, uh, who put in the complaint? A Mrs. Baker, the landlady. Well, what do you do in a case like this? Well, just go up and have a talk with the sailor, and like I say, everything is probably all right. If anything looks funny, we'll bring him down to headquarters and check him with the missing persons. Can't it wait till after Christmas? Oh, it might. But the child angle, that makes it touchy. So if you'll give me a man, I'll get going. Well, uh, wait a minute. I've been thinking. Uh, I'd better go with you myself. Sure, I'll be glad to have you. Last minute present, huh? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, something I got from my aunt. That reminds me, i got to pick up something for the wife. I'll be right back. You take over. What are you stopping here for? Shh. Something suspicious. You got your gun? Sure. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where are you going here, Sally? Oh, a shore patrol, emergency. Oh, yeah? What kind of emergency? Uh, my grandmother, she's sick. She has to get to the hospital. Yeah, what happened to your grandmother? You have to take her to a hospital in a police car. Hey, this is Duke Johnson's car. What happened to him? Oh, he was with me, but he, he got sidetracked. Oh, and he loaned you the car, huh? That's it. I'm going to pick him up later. I see. Duke Johnson or no other officer, when they're on duty, will lend their car. I think you and I better go in there and check this up. But I gotta... I, yeah, I, never mind. It'll keep, sailor. It'll keep. Go on, move over. What are you into now? Where'd you get that? I bought that for me. Here's one for you. <laughs> Here's one for your boyfriend. I haven't any boyfriend. Brad and I agreed to disagree. Yahoo! Boy, Steve is back in circulation. Line up on the right. I'm first. Uh, look me over, Steve. How about lunch, Mark? Uh, don't do anything until you check with me. <laughs> Thank you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> look here, I still don't like the Navy. <laughs> of course, Pop never said anything. Pops don't usually say anything around Christmas. You know what Christmas is, don't you? Well, it's a time where everybody gives presents to everybody else. We used to have Christmas back at the orphanage. Us kids used to get presents. Mostly clothes that didn't fit. But it was all right. But it wasn't like a real Christmas. It's Santa Claus. Santa Claus is the fellow that gives the presents. He's kind of fat, and he has a long white beard. He comes down the chimney. Of course, there isn't any real Santa Claus. It's just Pop. Grown-ups like to play like that. I'll bet Pop's got something figured out. Tree and presents. Kid stuff. Trains and things. Well, I'll bet he's even got something for you. him now. You Miss Baker? Yes. Call the police. About time you got here. Where's that room the boys locked in? Down here. What do you mean locked? It was locked. None in there. That kid's gone. Have you been here all the time? Well, I did go to the market. Who is this sailor? He's a chief petty officer on the Florida, and his name's Malone. What'd I tell you? That's the same fellow that locked you in the warehouse. Came up here, got the kid, and he beat it. I'll take care of him.
Attorney 6111. Chief Petty Officer Malone locked me in a warehouse and got away with the kid. Have him picked up and taken to the shore patrol office. Right. Gee, pal. Pop's in a jam. He's gonna go to jail. All on account of me. I shouldn't have done that to him. Telling Steve and Captain Parker he was my pop. Well, there's only one way to square. It's, uh, 325. I thought so. It's just like that Malone to keep Tommy away when he knows we're all waiting for him. I'm gonna go get him myself. Take it easy, Steve. I told you he'd be here. I don't know. I'm not taking any chances. You better go call Malone to find out what's up. Gee, I'm glad I caught you. Malone's in a spot. You bet he is. Tommy's gone. What does he mean, going back where I belong? Oh, Nels, what did Malone do to him? Well, there's something crazy here. Captain Parkin, the officer of the port, I've got Malone down at Shore Patrol headquarters. He's really in trouble. You just think he is. Wait till I get my hands on him. As I understand it, you called on Malone to assist you in a matter involving a Navy man. And that instead of cooperating, he assaulted you. No, he never laid a hand on me. Now listen, Captain. I don't want to cause any trouble for the Chief. 
But from the landlady's description of that kid, he's missing from a Los Angeles orphanage. And we've got to find him. What about it, Malone? Yes, sir. He's the boy, just as I tried to tell you. I picked him up on the roadside just outside of San Pedro. You mean to say he isn't your son? Yes, sir. But Steve Moore. I tried to tell her, but the dis... Well, she, she wouldn't listen to me. Neither would anybody else. So why did you keep on acting as the boy's father? Well, you ordered me to, sir. You threatened me with a general court-martial. Oh, yes, yes, so I did. <laughs> That's all right, sir. After I got over being sore, it was kind of fun. Now, where is the boy now? Over at Boston Moore's having a Christmas party. And that's why you left Mr. Johnson in the warehouse, so that uh, he wouldn't miss it? Yes, sir. You see, uh, all the boys on the Florida chipped in to kind of give him a nice Christmas, thinking he was my son. Mr. Johnson, there's the matter of the warehouse. I can't quite ignore the charge, unless... Oh, well, don't mention it. Uh, you see, I walked in there of my own free will. The door just happened to close behind me. I guess it was the wind. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I suppose you'll have to take the boy back. Yes, but I can wait until after the party. Well, Merry Christmas. Same to you. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Malone. Thank you, sir. Same to you. Can't go in. I don't care if he is. I want to speak to him out of the book. I beg your pardon. Why, that's all right, Steve. We were just leaving. Well, what have you done with that boy? What are you talking about? You ought to know where he is. You're managing everything. You're the chief gummer upper. You're responsible for the whole setup. <gasps> I am not. If you had an ounce of common decency, this thing wouldn't have happened. Here I am with a Christmas tree and packages and presents and everything and, and no Tommy. No Tommy, what are you talking about? He's at the party, isn't he? No, gone back where he came from and all because you treated him... Gone like... back? What are you talking about? You ought to know. Oh, that's what it is. You wouldn't let him go to the party because it was in my apartment. So he wrote the note and now he's probably... What note? This note, you big lemon, and don't shout! You should think by now you'd learn that you... Can't shout your way out of things. I know where he's going. Now, let's get the car. Pop's doing. And Steve. Too bad they couldn't get along. Wish they'd have wanted us as much as we wanted them. But they didn't. Now I gotta go back to the orphanage. Won't be so bad if they won't let me keep you. Let's get moving. Well, here comes another one. I'm glad to see you, too. Hey, thanks for the presents. They were swell. <laughs> I got something in the car for you, too. I hope you're gonna like it. You have? What's the idea of running away? Well, because I got you in a jam. Well, that's all straightened out. Now, you're going back to the orphanage, and I'm gonna get that straightened out. <laughs> get in the car. What have you done to this child to make him run away? Tell me, where were you going? Tell her. Back to the orphanage, where I came from. Orphanage? You're an orphan? And he's not your father? Now, what have you got to say to that? What have I got to say? You should be ashamed of yourself the way you've treated this little orphan. Tommy, you come with me. Hey! 
Yeah. Come you here. give me that kid. Get your hands off him. Where do you think you're going? Wouldn't you like to know? I'll get him. Let go of him. Merry Christmas. The idea of your pretending you're this child's father. Why didn't you tell me he was an orphan? You didn't give me a chance. Well, I'm going to adopt him. Oh, so that's how it is, huh? After all the grief I go through, you're going to adopt the kid. Well, we'll find out about that when we get to the orphanage. Oh, a fine chance you'll have of adopting him. Will you give him for a home a battleship? What's the matter with a battleship? Plenty. I'll give him a home where he'll have a mother's care. Mother's? Oh, that's a laugh. He'll probably grow up to be a big paint and putty man like Brad Wheeler. You leave Brad Wheeler out of this. You watch where you're going. No! Oh! <laughs> What I've done, you were driving. What's the big idea? Why don't you look where you're going? I wasn't driving, she was. Mister, he grabbed the wheel right out of my hand. Oh, he did, hey? Hey, who's going to pay for them vegetables? Take your hands off of me. I said, who's going to pay for their vegetables? And I said, take your hands off of me. Oh, smart guy. Hey. Hey, Here, you Stop him, Pop. Give it to him. That's enough of that. Now, stop blowing that horn. You've been drinking. I never drink. Let me smell your breath. Oh, stop oh, crying! Stop yelling at me! So you ain't been drinking, huh? No, I haven't been drinking, and don't be silly! Don't be silly, eh? You want me to make trouble for you? Look, you're gonna make trouble for me. Yes, I'm gonna make trouble for you. Come on, get in that car. Come on, you, get in your truck. You two, sister, get in this car. I'm gonna take you down to jail. You tell it to the judge. Come on, break it up. Come on, everybody, move on. I wasn't you even know, driving I the car. The she was driving. I was on this crater. Vegetables on my tire. Come on, everybody. Vegetables on the way. All right, officer. When I got there, traffic was tied up, horns were tooting, and these two were fighting. And the sailor gave me an argument. Of course, I did. never did any such thing. Yes, you did. Why the crazy man? Right. Why am I supposed to do this? No, I got a good idea. Hello. Yes, I was calling Los Angeles. Uh, hello. Is this the Golden State Orphanage? Uh, this is Sergeant uh, Flaherty, San Francisco Police. We've got a boy up here who ran away from your orphanage. Yes, yes, that's him. Well, sure he's all right. We'll have a police matron bring him back tomorrow. Now, wait a minute. Uh, don't hang up, will you? L let me talk to her, will you please, sir? Uh, sure, go ahead. Hello, this is Chief Gunner's mate, Malone. Uh, yeah, I've had Tommy with me and I'll bring him back. Oh, no trouble at all. Say, uh, what are the regulations for adoption? Yeah, that's right, the Florida. But what's the matter with the Navy? Sure, I live on a battleship, but I can find a place for him to board, can't I? <laughs> no, I'm not married. What? Gee, you sure make it tough on a kid being adopted. Oh, all right. Wait, wait, give me that phone. Hello. This is Steve Moore, Los Angeles. I'm qualified in every way to adopt this boy. I like him. He likes me. No, only my father's living. Chief Bosun's made on the Tennessee. I live alone. Stenographer. And I'm single. What? Oh, what's that got to do with it? But... Oh. Nothing. 
except that I'm the girl who said I'd never marry a sailor.